Here I find myself with a game about love, about hate, and about the other ones. Made by a guy or a girl. I'm going to play this game, enjoy this game, and analyze this game using the following lens. How to dissect and communicate to whoever cares to listen aha moments. In terms of games, moments when you finally figure out what to do. So these moments are important. More important than the actual moment, the actual aha moment, are the antecedents to this moment. That is what needs to be in place before you can have the aha moment. To properly dissect this and communicate it, I must understand the components that make up first the antecedent to these moments, and then the moment itself. What I have so far is, you have a goal. You understand what you're supposed to do. And you understand that there's something you lack in achieving this goal. This could be a physical thing that you need to get across. As far as this game is concerned, I don't know what it's going to be. It could be a mental, a cognitive thing. You need to work out various things, depending on the game. And then the other thing you need, before you can have the aha moment, is you need something. A clue, an idea. You need something that you can work with, you can play with, you can toss into your little cognitive brain machine and turn the gears or shake your head or whatever it is that you do to think, to brainstorm. Well, so far those are the three things. A goal, a problem, and a toy. There's still more, and that's the point of this. I want to explore and see what else is, because there's still something missing. Now the reason I want to do this is because by better dissecting and therefore recreate and communicating these aha moments, I will be able to recreate them. And I want to do that as part of my goal uh, um, in developing a, a, a curriculum that is designed around helping other people understand and use what is required or the skills necessary to have aha moments, to better pursue aha moments. Right now, aha moments are, they're at the whim of fate, as people like to say. Whim of chance. They're outside of people's control. You never know when it'll happen. Stroke of genius, the creative juices flowing, etc. I don't like that. I'm not feeling it. I want to change it. This is how I'm going to try to do that. Every step he takes, he says, I hate you. Love you. And this guy says, I love you. I hate you. <laughs> I'm really liking the aesthetic here, though. Why is the I love you guy the doofus looking one that sounds kind of slow and dumb? Whoa, so easy! I love you. Ah. I love you. I love you. It's <laughs> kind of cute, actually. <laughs> I kind of like it. He's saying I love you. <laughs> That's kind of cute. It's time for hate to speak up. This is funny. It's actually pretty cute. Oh, he's gonna say, I hate you. I love you. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Oops, they switched it up on me there. They're like, oh, you were doing, you're used to doing I hate. I love you. three things right now. So thing number one, goal. Thing number two, the unknown. And thing number three, the known. So in this case, the goal is to get one of these guys on top of this red button. And that's pretty simple. Um, I'm thinking mostly 
most puzzle platformers like this, the goals can be pretty straightforward. Most games in general, actually. Uh, you, you'd have to be pretty adventurous, risk-taking developer to make a game where you don't explicitly communicate to the gamer the goal because most gamers have been trained to function only if the goal is there, explained to them from the get-go. And then the unknown. And in this case, obviously, the unknown is, well, how do I get my guys from here to there? Then number three, known. And what do I know? Because it is known that I play with. And what I do know is this, these guys, this guy right here, hate. He says, I hate you, to characters. And that makes them move back one. This guy here, love. He says, I love you, to these characters. And that makes them move one space forward towards him. So he pushes one space away. He brings one space forward. Repelled by hate, attracted to love. Right, that's one thing I know. And then the other thing I know is I need to use these guys to get here. That's all I have to work with to get my aha moment. But yeah, so another thing that I know is these guys can jump up one level and down. And so they can jump onto anything, basically. So for example, he can jump onto hate. And on a block down there, he can... I love you. I love you. Jump onto one of these guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. Hate you. See? I love you. Okay, this is already starting to make sense. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Hmm. See, and now... Okay, so then my, my knowing and my unknowing is changing progressively as I continue to play the game. Now I'm in a new state where I have a, a revised set of knowns and unknowns. So now the, the unknown is still the same, actually, but the known has changed. One thing I know now is that it's probably not going to be love that I get to the red switch because I have a feeling love is going to drop down here because he's stuck right here. If this is if if this is the correct solution as I stand here, if, if I have not made any mistakes from the from zero point to now, then the only way the only place love can go is drop dropping down here. And if love drops down here, he cannot touch the switch. So it's going to it'll have to be hey, that is a possible known. And so that is what I'm going to wrestle with. I'm going to play with that little toy and see if that's what it is. So I'm going to I'm going to assume love is not going to push the switch. So I'm going to use him in another way. Also, another known that I have is I can use love as a stepping stone. So I'm going to play with that idea. I love you. Okay, so so far so good, but there's one problem here. Hate can't get up here. And even if hate were able to get up here, hate couldn't get up here. Okay, so I played a little bit. I played with what I knew, and I failed. The way that I played did not work. Using the word fail and play in the same sentence sounds weird, but I'm going to continue using that. The only reason why it sounds weird is because you don't do that. No one ever does say fail and play in the same sentence, but why not? I failed at playing. <laughs> Maybe not though, because I still have, I can still move. See, I have a known now, and my known is I can still move this guy around. I can bring him down here. I, I bring love this guy. you. Ooh. So even though the way I played appeared to be a failure, it might not be. Because I can do this. I can get love all the way over there by using hate as what I thought was going to be love as a stepping stone. What else do I know? I know I can move hate. So if I move hate over here, then I might be able I to do this. I love you. I love you. And I can do it. <gasps> Wait. Whoa. I love you. I can't. I failed at playing. Awesome! This is so fun. I'm so glad I failed at Plank. What did I learn from this failure? I really can't analyze that right now. Because all I did, I used, every, I used everything I knew to cross the gap of the unknown. And I almost did it. But there was one thing about the unknown that I wasn't 100% 
aware of. Did I increase my knowledge through this experience? No, I still can analyze this gap. I'm much closer to crossing the unknown now. Before, there was a lot of stuff I didn't know, but after failing once, after playing, I got closer to the to crossing the gap of the unknown. So close, I, am, I think I only need to take one more step. And from this point, from this perspective, I can analyze much better what that final step might be. All I need to know now is how to get a guy here. If I can get one guy here, I know everything about this level. There is no unknown. I have crossed the unknown gap. I'm going to start over. What I take from this is, I have four guys up here. This is my new, my new set of knowledge. Before, the first time, my knowledge did not include, I must keep a guy up, but now it does. That isn't to say that that is a guarantee win, but for right now, it's a revised set of knowledge that I have concerning how to cross the gap of the unknown. So I gotta keep a guy up here. I love you. Okay. How can I keep one guy up here? I know, I need to get one, I need to get one of these guys over here. Okay, so my, 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 what I know has now expanded. In order to keep one guy up here, I need to get use either love or hate as a as a stepping stone. From this perspective, my knowledge has changed. The first time I played this this level, I had no idea that I would have to use love or hate as a stepping stone here, and that I would have to keep one of these guys up here to get up there. I could have guessed, but it wasn't knowledge. It was a guess. Right now, it's knowledge. That's the only way I can be this level. That's interesting. So now I'm working with some stuff. Now that I have that, I'm gonna, now I have some possibilities. I love you. 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 <laughs> now I'm 100% stuck. Interesting. So now that, at this point with this new knowledge, it's all about playing. I keep playing until I can figure out how to do that. Or I keep playing until I figure out I can't do that. I played a little bit, okay? And now I'm, at, I'm at, now I'm in a slightly new perspective, but I have the same type of knowledge that I'm playing with. And it looks like I can get a guy here. I love you. By bringing that guy in. I love you. So now this is looking good. I might be able to do this. I'm I almost there. You. Oh, no way. See, if I can, see I'm in a new situation. I can see why this is so confusing to understand. It's like you're const you constantly have a new scenario with new knowledge. Because now it's not... Last scenario I had, all I need to do is get this guy over here. And then I could beat it. But now the new scenario I have is I need to get this guy over here. I don't know how. The reason is because I can't foresee this scenario. And so that's what playing is all about. Playing is about just messing around with things the best you can and learning from it. That's what failing's about. You learn from failure. So now I have failed at three different scenarios. So now I have three pieces of new, of new knowledge to work with. The more I fail, the more knowledge I have. The more knowledge I have, the better chance I have of solving the puzzle. At what point does it become frustrating where I, want to, where I don't enjoy it anymore? Another piece of new knowledge, if this was love, could attract this guy one space, and then he could walk on. But then here's another thing. Is it possible to get, in, get into this position with this being love, hate, and this being love? At this stage, it, I don't know. So once again, I gotta play. Now I have a new piece of knowledge. Try to get in this same situation, but have this be love and this be hate. I love you, I love, I love you, 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 I love you. I'm getting close to that point where I where I need to somehow get love here and hate here. And so in this play session I have to be aware of this. And I should start thinking right now, okay, well how am I going to do it? 
I love you. Keep going like I always did. I love you. And I'm gonna be more aware, like, okay. I love you. I definitely I need to you. figure something out first. So I think I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna put him here now. And then I gotta get him up there somehow. Okay, that's easy. I love you. Got it. Go. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I love I'm bring that guy there first. <laughs> Calm down, James. Got, got a little excited there. That was awesome. That was really cool exploring that. I learned a lot there. Now I'm going to take a break from playing right now because I got to organize my thoughts. But I learned.